Right. I think kind of have to start from scratch and right. set up the basics. It'd be nice to have something early on, freshman or sophomore, so when you bring them in junior and senior level, they kind of have some exposure. Yeah, okay. How many of you would return to the conference next year should we elect to continue to do it? Did you like it enough to come back? Would you like it enough to recommend it to your friends? Uh, we, we had about the right size crowd. We had about the same, maybe a little more than we had at Santa Fe. I'm thinking that if we could get this up to about 100, uh, 100 people would be about the limit. You can still have dialogue, but you don't have everybody running over everybody. Yes, sir. Is it limited only here to New Mexico or would for example, El Paso Community College and UTEP be included? Well, we could do that simply because we do programs with El Paso Community College and UTEP all the time. We're, we're not, I don't think we're parochial enough to think you couldn't only spend money in New Mexico, are we both? As long as you're doing it for New Mexico, they could come over. Yeah. <laughs> we do well, have a problem with New Mexico we, we, being directed area for We people. probably have a closer relationship with El Paso Community College because we get a lot of transfers from yeah. them. And we have, uh, we have our, uh, articulation agreements with them and that sort of thing. UTEP we do work with, but of course they're a four-year school. But I think that's an excellent recommendation, particularly for El Paso Community College. Anything else come to mind that might help us improve this conference? This is the second one we've had. I've been very pleased with both of them. Yes, ma'am. Did we invite community leaders at all? Because I think there'd be a lot of interest on the part of people outside of um, the university. Uh, no, because what we asked the Daniels Foundation to do, and maybe if you were talk, talking about teaching community leaders as opposed to teaching students, the Daniels Foundation initially is interested in teaching students. And so uh, we may do a better job with adult education, for example. There are a lot of adult education that's not in a two or four year school. Extension service does a lot of that kind of thing. But I think initially we'd like to kind of hone our game and try to prove what we do, uh, particularly freshman through senior year. That's where I think we need to spend our time. Well, yes, I do like the community leaders could come in and talk about where the where they see the, the weaknesses in the ethics of the students coming out. No, no, that's a good idea. And then we could, you know, maybe refine our teaching strategies, et cetera, to focus on those types of issues. Uh, I, I think that's, that, that, that's, that's a follow-up. We could get a lot of business people to, to come in and maybe do a three or four member panel and talk about what they see coming out of our schools right now, two and four year schools, and where they think there might be some opportunities for improvement. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. I was saying a great place to start, which we talked about is the advisory council. <coughs> I have an advisory council. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have a advisory council. Um, and so they I think that's a good idea for, for next time. Bring in three or four of them and talk about their experiences. And what I'd like to think that we could have both large and small employers because uh, large employers oftentimes, when you get a big enough corporation, you don't have the same sense for what's going on in the trenches as you do uh, as you do in a smaller company of five or 10 or 15 people. I think that'd be uh, an important thing. Other, other recommendations for us? Well, A, I want to, yes, David. Well, I just want to really thank the Daniels Fund. I was about to do that, and, uh, so thank you for thanking you. <laughs> thank you very much. I think it's been really important to me in my own scholarship um, and teaching to get exposed to this principle-based ethics because I find it very intriguing how it's not quite virtue ethics, it's not Kantian ethics, it's, it's, it's something entirely different. And I think we have an opportunity to really develop that and nourish what is that difference and what is that about? I talked to O.C. Farrell at lunch about some of his ideas and at breakfast again. And some of my ideas as we've talked and interviewed, and Grace Ann, as we've interviewed the different executives and people at the fund and people who knew Bill Daniels, there's something unique about that that, that still needs to come out, that still okay. needs to be nourished. Okay. And I would like to see us do that. And perhaps one of the ways to do that is we've had Linda Shielders here and but there's other people at Daniels too that could come here and, and at a session um, and really uh, be outstanding 
is, is I think better than our lunch speaker, if you don't mind me saying so. Okay. It's, I think these people are just fabulous mm -hmm. that I've interviewed at the Daniels Foundation. One of the things we might want to do as, a, as an area of improvement is as we put the program together next year is to have a little broader participation in terms of some of the two-year colleges and the other four-year colleges because we kind of put it together internally here. I think it was Bruce and I and O.C. Farrell and Linda Farrell and Janice, and that was, that was about the program <laughs> committee, wasn't it? And so I, I think we need to cast a little wider net on, on what might be interesting. Uh, Linda and Barbara, yes, one more. I was just going to say, maybe um, since this is a conference on ethics, maybe we can get somebody from the philosophy department who knows about the ethical philosophy to come and sit on the panel. You know, and we didn't even have anybody from philosophy apply to be a fellow, did we? They're, they're not, uh, they don't like us doing the ethics. <laughs> 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 it's a church thing. They, they think they own the, the term ethics. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a different kind of ethics. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I know we have a very small philosophy department here, and uh, we're always, one of the things we're trying to do at New Mexico State is get, make sure every college is somehow, for example, we have health and social services right next door to us. There are multiple, multiple ethical challenges in health, and they have social work over there, and my gosh, those people have to be up against it full time, all the time, nurses, those kind of people. Engineering is very keen on, on ethics. And so we hope to get engineering a little more engaged in, in the future in some of our activities. Education, the College of Education, I don't think we had anybody express an interest, but uh, College of Education is one that I would think down the road would be how to penetrate uh, public schools with, uh, with ethics education would be an interesting topic to, to get into. Well, not to belabor it, you, uh, by God, we didn't save a whole lot of time. Uh, a round of applause for everybody who participated in this conference. Thank you all.